In the gospel reading today, our Lord tells us that we are to seek first the kingdom of God and his way of righteousness, and everything else will be given to us. Now we think about that and recognize that we need to put God first. That is exactly, as I've told you many times, where we're headed. Every single person on the face of the earth is going to have to make a choice. Is it God or is it someone else? Ultimately, obviously, it's Satan, but you can put anything else in there. It can be self, it can be money, it can be fame, it can be whatever. What's important to you? Or should I say, what is most important to you? Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. That's where your focus is going to be. And our focus needs to be on God. And there is that promise that our Lord made that if we seek God first and his way of righteousness, then he's going to take care of everything else. We don't have to worry. You think about what's going on in America right now, just look at the number of people that are ant on anti-anxiety medications. We worry about everything in this society. And if we're all worried and upset about this, that, and the other thing, are we really seeking God first? The Lord said, don't be anxious. Don't be worried. And we are. And so again, we have to ask ourselves, where are we putting our focus? But we really need to look at this question very seriously because our Lord told us we cannot serve two masters. So we look at the enemy and we realize that the people who serve Satan, they serve him wholeheartedly. They don't back down from anything. They are willing to give their entire lives to the service of their master. If Christian people would try half as hard to serve God as the Satanists served their master, this whole world would have been saved centuries ago. But we just sort of plod along and, you know, hope that maybe everything works out, kind of. But do we really want to serve the Lord? And let's put this into a context. Back in 1849, a very unfortunate man named Albert Pike wrote a letter talking about what was necessary in order for them, he was the head of the Masons, by the way. Um, anyway, he wrote this thing talking about what was going to be necessary for them to achieve their ultimate goal, which was world domination. And he laid it all out, which of course has been followed quite precisely up to now. And these people have put their whole lives into this, knowing that they would never see it. Think about that. They knew that they would never see it. And yet they were willing to put forth all the effort, anything that it was going to require to be able to get their, their goal. And their goal is about this world. It was about taking over. They're just about there. They've almost accomplished their goal. And it goes back even further than that. All this really started back 300 years ago. So think about all the people who have dedicated their lives to serving Satan in this way. And never once did they turn back. Never once did they doubt about what it was that they were doing because they were intent on serving their master. How about you and me? We say that Jesus is master. We don't usually use that term. Instead, we just call him Lord, which is exactly what it means. Jesus Christ is Lord. He's our master, which means he is the one that we're supposed to be obedient to, which means he's the one that we're supposed to serve. You cannot serve two masters, then you have to make a choice of who you're going to serve. And how do we serve the Lord? 
Do we really seek his will in our own lives as well as everywhere else? In the Our Father, we pray that God's will would be done. We pray that his kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. But do we really want that? Again, we look at what's going on and the devil knows exactly where human weakness lies, so he's willing to offer us everything for the immediate pleasure. That's exactly what our society's given into. Look at the list that St. Paul laid out 2,000 years ago of the works of the flesh. Welcome to America. It's all right there. That's what this is all about. We are so focused on our own pleasures and on the worldliness and on all these different things about the self, which is exactly what the devil is going to offer you. See, this is why his minions are not worried about serving their master, because it's all about selfishness. So they're willing to serve him wholeheartedly because ultimately it's for their own selfish gain. And that's where the difference is because we are to serve the Lord in charity, in love. And love is the opposite of selfishness. And that's where the rub comes in because we tend to be very selfish people. The goal of our Christian life is to overcome our selfishness and to learn how to love with our whole heart and soul and strength. But the devil has provided lots and lots of ways for us to give in to whatever selfish desires there happen to be. And so that's again the question we all have to look at. Whom do I serve? We all have to serve someone. Even Bob Dylan, who you can watch the video, he admits who he serves. He sold his soul to Satan. He tells you that straight out. He doesn't even try. Well, I guess he didn't say it exactly. He goes, well, you know, know." and he just, he lays it right out. This is what he did. And yet he put out a song that says, everyone must serve someone. Everyone must serve someone. Who is it going to be? It's not about who you give lip service to. It's about who you serve. Who do you give your life to? That's the real question all of us have to ask. What is important to me? What are the priorities in my life? And we think about it. And I've pondered this many times over the years. Here we are 2,000 years into the history of the church, and we have about 8,000 canonized saints. And that's pretty impressive, until you stop to think that's four a year. Suddenly it's not so impressive. Four people a year on average have lived such holy lives that we can say, this person is a saint. But we're not doing too well. Look at how many people are serving Satan. It's pretty obvious. There are thousands of them. They live horrible lives. And if hell had a wall of honor, which would be a dishonor, I mean, it would be filled with names of all the people who've lived their lives for him. Remember the question that our Lord asked. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul in the process? So even if we wanted to look at it selfishly, which doesn't work, it's simply a question of do we want to go to heaven or do we want to go to hell? Which are we going to be striving for? Which do we really want? If we want to say, I want to go to heaven, and I hope that's what we would all say, what are we doing to get there? Look at your day-to-day life and ask yourself, am I on the trajectory that's going to lead me to heaven? 
Again, we need to be very careful because in America, because we take polls and the majority wins and all these sorts of things, we tend to look at it and say, well, you know, if nine out of 10 or eight out of 10, seven out of 10 even, you know, that's still the majority, that's doing pretty well. Yeah, so hey, I follow seven out of 10 commandments, that's pretty good, isn't it? Well, it needs a little work because seven out of 10, eight out of 10, and nine out of 10 isn't going to get you to heaven. We need to be seeking the kingdom of God and his way of righteousness. To live according to the way of God, not according to the way of the world. That's the hard part because we want to fit in. But Christians never have. That was part of the reason they were persecuted. They were different. They didn't fit in with the Roman culture. They shunned it. They rejected it. We talked about this a couple of months ago. Maybe in God's providence, he is allowing the disaster that we've got going out in the world so that we actually have an opportunity in our day to say, I'm rejecting it, and I'm choosing Jesus Christ, and I'm going to live my life for the righteousness of God. Because look at how bad it is out there. That's what the early Christians did. That's what people throughout history have done. They've had to shun the ways of the world. And now we keep trying to make peace with the ways of the world. We keep trying to fit in with the world. It's never worked and it isn't going to now. So ask yourself again, do I really want to seek first the kingdom of God and his way of righteousness? That's what it's all about. Where are we going to put our focus? What is truly most important to us? Again, we look at God and he will tell us very clearly, all you have to do is look at the crucifix. What is most important to God? You. You are what is important to God. What's important to you? The answer should be God. But for a lot of us, it's not. God is important, but not most important. That's where we need to make some adjustments. So again, look seriously at your life and ask yourself, is there something that needs to change? Am I truly living according to the righteousness of God? A holy life. Again, as we keep looking at What does your prayer life look like? That's number one. What does your prayer life look like? I'm not saying just say the morning offering and that's good enough. You're taking care of your day's worth of prayer. I'm saying, do you have a serious prayer life? Are you putting God first? Are you spending the time with the Lord? And then from there, is it the charity toward neighbor? Are we striving to live virtuous lives in charity toward others. Isn't that what Jesus told us are the first two commandments? Love God with your whole heart and soul and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. That's what it's all about. That's seeking the righteousness of God. Remember, the Lord made it very clear. He said, you're gonna be children of your heavenly Father. God lets his sun shine on the good and the bad. He lets the rain fall on the just and the unjust. That's what we have to be about as well. That doesn't mean you have to hang around with people who are unjust. It doesn't mean you become like people who are unjust, but it means we can still be charitable. It means we can still be kind. It means that we still have to be an example, that we have to shine like a light in the darkness. That's exactly what the Lord is asking of us. He put us into this world to be the leaven in the world, not to become worldly, to be the leaven in the world, to raise things up, to be the example. 
That's, again, what our focus has to be. Out of love for others. Not because we think we're better than they are. Not because, look at my righteousness, you're a loser and I'm not. No, that's becoming like the Pharisee. You're lucky, Lord, that you created me instead of being like this loser over here. Like, no, 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 no. But it's to be able to simply say, out of love for God and for neighbor, I want this person's good. I want their conversion. I want their salvation. That's what we're supposed to be about, desiring the true good for the other. So again, look at that and ask yourself, what needs to change in my own life to be living that way? Because in so many ways we have tried to make peace with the world. The world is in the wrong hands right now. The Lord made it very clear. He called Satan the prince of this world. Satan, remember, told the Lord himself, he said, all the kingdoms have been given to me and I can give them to anyone I want. So why would we want to make peace with that? Why do we want to be like that? Because the world has glitz and glitter and money and all these things? Who cares? It's all going to go away. It's all going to be left behind, even more than being left behind when we die. It's all going to pass away. We know that the world is going to be destroyed in fire one day. So what good is it all? What is important is your soul, because your soul is worth an infinite amount. Gold is worth a little bit. Your soul is infinite in its value. Don't sell your soul for something that's going to be gone. Or we'll go back into the Old Testament, you'll see that's exactly what happened. Oh, well, for a bowl of porridge, I'll sell my birthright. What an idiot. Your birthright is heaven. Don't sell your birthright for some silver, gold, or some glitter, or some goofy stuff that's all going to go away. What good is it? Put the focus where it belongs. If what is the most valuable thing in this world is your soul, then that means it's the spiritual things that are the most important. And that's exactly what Jesus taught us. You can't serve two masters. And so if we're going to serve the Lord, he made clear what that has to look like. It is charity, love of God and love of neighbor. That means selflessness. And it means striving to live a truly holy life. Not to look holy, not to look good. Nobody's going to get to heaven based on that. To be good, to be holy to live a truly righteous life, which means to live our lives for Jesus Christ, that he truly is what is most important, so that everything revolves around him, everything follows from him. And if we truly love the Lord, then we will be able to love others. That's what this is all about. So we have, everyone has to make that choice. Whom will we serve? We all have to serve someone. And it's not just ourselves. So make a choice. The Lord made clear. He chose to serve us. But because in God's way, service is an act of charity, he's not going to force it on us. We don't have to serve him. We have to choose to do it. And that's the great gift of having a free will. It's also the danger of having a free will. We can choose the wrong thing and lose our soul. So the Lord made absolutely clear what this is all about. And now the choice is ours. You cannot serve God and mammon. 
Unfortunately, we look at what's going on in the church and most priests and bishops have chosen mammon. Really pretty pathetic. It's time that we reject the mammon and that we choose to serve God.